Think about the fact that the earth is constantly spinning. How how is everything not falling all over the place? It's kind of crazy. It's kind of it's kind of weird. It's kind of wonderful. It's definitely something to be in awe of. So when I moved down the shore in my early 30s for a new job, I had narrowed down my choices to where to live, to Tom's River or Long Beach Island. Everyone I worked with lived in Tom's River, while Long Beach Island was right down the street. Tom's River was about a half hour away. Now, the easier decision probably would have been to go to Tom's River since I didn't know anybody in this area, and I could at least hang out with work people from time to time, but then I would have a half hour commute. But I often... um, you know, my love of the shore actually won out. I mean, this is not surprising. You've heard me talk about this before. I love the shore, love the shore. That's why I've made it my full-time home. Um, but not only did I move there because I loved the shore, which enhanced my life so much, but I think I met way more people living at the shore than I would have ever met in Tom's River because I just don't think I would have had the same opportunities to get out and do as much in Tom's River as I did down here on Long Beach Island. But I do often look back, and I mean often, and wonder how different my life would be had I moved to Tom's River instead. And it makes me so grateful for that decision. I know that was the right decision for me. And I just think it's kind of cool to think, gosh, what if I wouldn't have made that decision? What if I would have moved to Tom's River? Would I still be living? Because I probably eventually would have made it back to Philadelphia like I did, you know, anyway. I'd probably still be living there. I don't think that I would have realized that I could live at the shore full time like I am now. And it's what led me to buying my dream home with my husband. So I often think about that. I'm like, I just wonder where I would be and what I would be doing. I would have chosen Tom's River instead of Long Beach Island. Not unhappy with that choice or decision at all. I also wonder if I'd have... So many friends that I have here now, if I hadn't gotten a second job as a bartender that first summer I lived at the shore. I still didn't know many people. I thought being a bartender would be a great way to meet people, and I was right. It was. Now, I had never been a bartender before. I was attempting to get a job at one of the hottest spots on the island. A few people even told me, they're like, you don't have a chance getting a job at that place. I thought, what the hell? I got nothing to lose. I applied. I lied. Told them I was an experienced bartender. And I got the job. And I met the majority of my friends while working that job. But I still think back sometimes to how different my life would be had I not worked up the nerve to apply for that position. Not only apply, but lie. And, you know, this is what the guys have over us girls. We don't ever want to lie. We don't ever want to be, like, saying that we're qualified for something that we're not qualified for. I lied. It worked. And that's what guys do all the time. They just, you know, and I'm not saying you should be a liar. I'm saying you should fudge something that's not really going to hurt anybody except maybe your employer. You know, and then you get the hang of it. I I got the hang of it pretty quickly. Nobody ever complained about me as a bartender. Well, not to me anyway. Um, So I'm not really sure if it's hurting somebody. But, you know, it often makes me think of there's a study that says women won't go for a job unless they feel that they're one. they have 100% of the you know, qualifications that they're looking for, where men, if they have 60% of the qualifications, they're like, I can fake it till I make it. I'm going for this job. So sometimes you do. Sometimes you just have to do what you got to do to get in there. I am not advocating lying. I do not like lying. But that time, I didn't have a problem with it because I wasn't hurting anybody. Maybe the employer I was hurting a little bit, but I, you know, I even fudged it so much that I said, you know, I haven't bartended in a long time. I used to work at not even like a bar. I worked at like I said, I worked at a, like one of those fast food chains like Fridays or Ruby Tuesdays. And I said, you know, and it was like 10 years ago. So I'm going to definitely need a, a refresher. So I didn't like too much. Light enough to get me to the job. So I met so many people from that job. I, I've talked about this before, too. I had like different groups of friends. I had my older couple that lived down the street from me that I ended up hanging out with, you know, all week long. We would go out and watch the Eagles games together. I had my pool playing friends that I hung out with. And once my job ended, uh, cause it was seasonal, we started, I just joined them and went to different places and start. We met twice a week to play pool. It was so fun. Uh, I met a bunch of girls that ended up becoming, you know, my squad. And the whole time I lived here, you know, we hung and we had a blast. We went everywhere together. It was great. 
And, you know, I still have, you know, I'm still meeting people or running into people that I used to wait on. I just saw a guy uh, go past my house on his boat the other day, and I, I, I'd seen him a couple of times, and I thought, I think that's Bill. Bill, who used to come into the place that I bartended, and, you know, I've seen him through the years, and we'll say hi or whatever, and finally I saw him. He's go going by pretty slow because you're supposed to um, back in the res- residential area, and I said, um, you're Bill, right? And he's like, uh, yeah. I'm like, hey, it's Wendy from Pops, and he's like, oh, hey. Hey, how are you? You know, so and now he knows where I live. So, you know, he's already passed by a couple of times and now he waves. Hey, Wendy, what's up? Uh, so I just I have a ton of people that I met through this job and I'm still friends with them. A lot of them, not all of them, but uh, a lot of them. And um, I wouldn't change it for the world. And, and, and like I said, sometimes I just sit back and wonder if I hadn't had the guts to go in there and apply for that job, I probably would be living a very different life. So it also helps me to, you know, kind of psych myself up to do things that I don't really, not that I didn't want to do it. I was just afraid. It was just a a scary, uncomfortable thing for me. I'd never really bartended before. But you know what? I had nothing to lose. I didn't have a bartending job. So if I came out with a bartending job, I was ahead of the game. If I came out without a bartending job, I was in the same exact position. So, you know, Maybe I would have felt a little bit foolish. Maybe I would have wasted my time. Who cares? I probably would have spent that time sitting in front of the television anyway. So that's what happened with that. I often wonder about how my life would be if in an opposite direction. Like what if I had married my couch potato boyfriend? What if I would st- still probably be arguing with him constantly about giving up a nap in order to go do something fun? We got into a big fight one day when we were in California because he wanted to take a nap in the hotel room rather than go see California and the Hollywood Walk of Fame and Chinese Grom and Theater. And so I wonder about that relationship. If I would have stayed in that relationship, how different my life would be. I, mean, I probably would have a couple of kids right now. Um, I probably would be divorced too. Not positive. Don't know. I wonder if I would never have broken free from the unhealthy relationship I was in when I first moved to the shore, how different my life would be. Uh, I also wonder how different things would be in my life if my husband and I got together like say 20 years earlier since we've known each other since we were eight years old. Yeah, it took us a while to get together. We didn't start dating until we were 40. So the 28 20, 22 years, 32 years, gosh, 32 years it took us to get together. Everything happens in its own time for, you know, its own purposes. And that's another thing we were talking about over the weekend. Joe and I don't have kids, either one of us. I didn't make it a priority to have kids when I was single. I didn't want to be the single mom. I didn't want to make the choice to be the single mom. I didn't want to start out without having a husband or a partner or somebody to help me along uh, in that very tough, rewarding job. So when I did finally get married at the age of 41, I immediately had an ovary removed and figured that cut my chances um, in half at least of having a child. And we didn't, you know, we didn't try, not try. We just, you know, kind of let things take their natural course. And, you know, I was in my 40s. You know, the chances of me getting pregnant at that age were pretty slim to begin with. And then I had the ovary removed. But I do think about, you know, we were even talking to that, uh, about that with our guests who have kids. And I was saying, you know, yeah, you know, it just didn't pan out for us. And I could sit back and be really upset and think, you know, I've really lost out. Um, but I'm okay with it. This is the way my life, uh, you know, is, is is panning out. And I do sometimes wish that I would have had children. I don't think that I want to have children now. I'm almost 50. As I said to my girlfriend, Tracy, when she goes, well, you could have, you know, even with the ovary being removed, you could have still had a baby. I said, yeah, and imagine right now. If, I w- if we would have gotten pregnant, say, you know, at 43 or 44, you know, I'd have a four or five-year-old running around right now. <laughs> and her husband said, and you probably sure as heck wouldn't be living here. Agreed. I am positive that we would not be living here if we had had children, which, you know, maybe it would have been better. Who knows? But that's the magic of wonder. 
You know, you just think about what your life could have been as compared to where it is now. Now, I'm lucky. I'm in a great place uh, in my life and where I live, both. And I'm very happy with the choices that I've made. But I do like to sit back and wonder sometimes how my life could have gone if I had made some, you know, different decisions. Did you ever see that movie Sliding Doors with Gwyneth Paltrow? In one scenario, she makes it to the train in the last second just as the doors are sliding closed. In the other scenario, she doesn't make it. And then the story unfolds where when she does make the train, she gets home a little earlier, catches her boyfriend in bed with another woman. She dumps him, goes on, lives this, you know, adventurous life, decides that she's not, you know, waiting anymore. And in the other scenario, she misses the train. And by the time she gets home, the woman is out of her apartment and she never catches on. And then it's the... The rest of the movie is just showing the two of them together and their life together. And it's very interesting because it's so true that your life can go in either direction just like that. So are you happy with where you are? Like I said, I'm lucky I am. Then wonder and be thankful for the choices you've made. If you aren't happy with where you are, maybe wonder where some of your choices led you in the wrong directions. Think back to certain crossroads and wonder what your life would be like if you made the other decision. You know, maybe staying alone rather than getting married or, you know, waiting to have kids. These are things you can't really take back. I mean, getting married and having kids, you know. And and obviously, once you have kids, you never want to think about how how you – you don't want to think about your life without them because you can't imagine your life without them. And that's what the wonder and beauty of having children is, that – overpowering, undeniable love. I'm a little sorry I missed out on that. I have that for my dog, but I think it might be a little bit stronger with your own children. My guess is it probably is. So can you revisit some of these, you know, decisions? Maybe it was a different career or a different job, or maybe you decided not to go back to school when you thought you should have gone back to school or stayed in school. Can you revisit it now? Is it something that you can do now? Can you change jobs? Can you go back to school Can you just, you know, start a whole new career, start your own business? Think about it. Revisit it. If it's possible to make a change, make a change. If it's not possible right now, think about how you can make it a change in the future. Pondering is good. And the feeling of contentment and knowing you made the right decision is priceless. In the words of Luyan Womack, I just realized I have a uh, typo in my blog. I said, in the words of Luyan Womack, it's the words. Not the world's, the words of Leanne Womack. I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. Um, I believe the name of the song is called I Hope You Dance. It really is a nice feeling, and the sense of all you get is a way to get more joy out of your daily life. I still wonder how much better my life can be. That's why I've taken on, taken on these projects. That's why I'm doing the blog every day, and it's why I'm doing – this podcast because number one, I want to show my transition. I want to show, because it's not BS. I really was a terrible pessimist looking at the worst of life, the worst of myself, the worst in other people. And I've slowly made a change to, like I've said before, not an optimist that feels wrong for me to describe myself that way. Because I was a pessimist for far too long to all of a sudden just overnight become an optimist. But I am a hopefulist. I'm hopeful that one day, maybe it will feel natural to me to be an optimist. This didn't happen overnight. There were baby steps. And it took me a while to realize that what I was doing was actually working. I kind of just plugged along and plugged along and plugged along. And then all of a sudden one day I was like, wait a minute. I am kind of thinking a little bit differently now. This is kind of cool. So for the rest of the week, I'm going to talk a little bit about my personal path, how I made the transition from pessimist to hopefulist. What makes me able to talk about this, to encourage you and and help you become more of a hopefulist as well? I'm not going to use any words like expert or authority or anything like that. All I'm doing is telling you my story. I'm telling you what worked for me. Maybe it will work for you. Maybe I can direct you to things that will work for you. But my point was, 
which I 